Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Um, this is kind of my first impressions video of the Hitachi C12 RSH 12 inch sliding compound miter saw. Um, first things first, this is a heavy saw. Um, I thought my old saw was heavy and it didn't slide, but this thing is a beast. It came strapped to a pallet on a freight truck because it's so big it couldn't be handled by regular mail, which I'm guessing is uh, the case for most of these types of saws. Um, one of the uh, first things that drew my attention to this saw was um, the number of features that are offered for the price. And I'll list off a few of those features here coming up soon, but I was able to get this saw delivered for about $285, and that's after tax. Um, it is a reconditioned saw. Hitachi has made the C12 RSH2, which is an upgraded version, a upgraded version of this model, but what they've done is they've eliminated a ton of features, stripped the saw down, and from what I can tell, it is not nearly as good a saw as this one. So that's why I was in such a hurry to purchase this one, because they're not making them anymore, and the only way you can buy them is reconditioned. I bought mine from CPO Outlets. Um, they were really good to work with. As you know, the first saw that I bought came in damaged, and they replaced it at no extra charge. No questions asked. They were very nice. Um, so, let's talk about some of the features that drew me to this saw. Uh, first off, the, uh, the bed here uh, rotates past 45 degrees, which is always useful, especially when you're trying to fine-tune 45 degrees. You don't have to worry about a hard stop getting in the way. Um, you get a, more than 12 inches of slide on this, and I know that that's not like a best-in-class. I know that some saws get 14 and even 16 inches. Um, but I really spent a lot of time thinking about what I work on and really most of my projects that I work on usually go work with wood that's less than 12 inches or 24 inches and above. Sometimes I'll be in between, but either way we've all seen the method of cutting one side, flipping it over and cutting the other side. And as long as the saw is finely tuned and, and uh, square to the world uh, you should be able to do that without any um, lingering uh, saw marks or anything like that. So I wasn't too concerned about the capacity. It's still a lot more than what my old saw was because it did not slide. I think I mentioned earlier that it goes beyond 45 degrees. Actually, to the right, it goes to 60 degrees, which is another useful angle when you're doing framings and and uh, just needing a little bit more capacity beyond 45 degrees. Another good feature about this saw, and one of the biggest things that attracted it to me, was the distance from the back of the saw here to the fence. So the shorter this distance means that it's the closer you can put this saw to the wall. And for a person like me who is not planning on taking this to a job site but making it a stationary saw, um, it benefits me to be able to put that saw as close to the wall as possible because then it frees up more floor space for me. And so this saw has the option of let me lock it down into place and maybe swing it to the other side here and then I'll change my camera angle so I can show you. So one of the major benefits of this saw is that you can lock the rails to slide either behind the saw or um, in front. And Personally, I'll always have it so the saw slides on the rails and the rails are sticking forward. I'm not sure where there is a benefit to having the rails go out the back, but let me show you how you adjust that. So you have two knobs here, two locking knobs, and depending on which knob you unlock, it depends on which, which direction the rails go. So if I unlock the front rail here, the whole saw head will slide forward on the rails, and it extends forward and the rear, the rails never extend past, farther past this guard that's right here. But if I lock this front knob down and unlock the rear knob, then the saw will move backwards on its rails. And again, I don't know where there's the benefit to this. I, I would think it would just be good enough the way 
um, I plan on using it, having the saw extend out on the rails. Now the only way I can see that that could be an issue is maybe on a bevel cut this could get in the way of the stock laying on the bed um, and you would maybe need it to be extended backwards. Um, but if I ever run across that type of situation, I'll be sure to share it with you. The saw has an adjustable laser, so you can position the laser to be on the right side of the blade over here, or on the left side of the blade over there, or directly in the middle of the cut. I've currently got it set to the left side of the blade, because that's kind of where I prefer it, but it's nice to have that adjustability. If you look right back here, there's the laser, and then here's the little knob to adjust it left or right. So one feature I've already been playing around with, um, and that's where why you see all the sawdust here, is um, I wanted to see how easily I could make dados with this saw. And there are some drawbacks to doing that, particularly well, first of all, let me explain to how I do that. Um, the saw has a flip away arm here, and the arm has, has a depth stop. And when the arm is in place, it will stop the saw short um, you know, of going fully down into the bed by a certain amount, determined by how much you have that screw turned down. And so what I did really quick is I took a couple 2x4s, marked out some measurements, and then I plowed away um, half the depth of both of these and then made a half lap joint and as I was doing that I noticed a couple of things first of all um, there, there's small inconsistencies in the depth and it could be the that this piece isn't sturdy enough it could be that debris is getting under the screw I'm not sure and so you could but you, I can push down harder and it will flex the saw and makes it go, make it go deeper so it's a little inconsistent um, second of all when the saw is extended out or back, buried back into the fence, when the blade is down all the way, it will make a clean cut, and that doesn't matter because you're not trying to make a flat bottom cut or a dado or anything like that. But when it's raised off the bed, as you can see the curvature of the blade, the blade actually does start curving up before it hits the fence. And so that telegraphs itself into the depth and it gets into the dado and it, so it makes the dado slightly curve up. And so the front of the dado might be your measurement and then the back of the dado will be shorter or shallower. So what I ended up having to do was I took that a piece of plywood, I lost it already, I had a piece of plywood and I laid it across the bed to pad it out so when the blade cuts through the dado, it makes the same depth all the way through. So I'm not sure how useful this is actually going to be. It was one of those things that I didn't know if I was going to like it. It seemed like a great idea, but I knew that I really wouldn't know until I tried it out. And now that I've tried it out, I still might find some operations, some repeatable operations where it would be useful. But as of right now, I think my table saw will still be my go-to for making dados. A um, couple other features that are not as important, but I still like them, um, is that this saw is a belt-driven saw, and so it's a, a bit quieter than my old direct drive saw. Um, there's plenty of power, I don't have to worry about that, not that that was really a concern. Um, a nifty little feature here um, is kind of this, it's a fine adjust knob on this side. Um, so you can kind of get it roughly into the position you want just by swinging it and then if you really want to dial in that, that, that uh, angle that you want, you just you can turn this knob and it will move it ever so slightly, which is nice. The positive stops are at uh, 90 and at 22 and a half and 30, 45 like most saws have. There's a similar fine adjustment knob for the bevel in the back, but it's all the way around in the back, and I'm probably not going to... I, I don't do a lot of bevel cuts anyway. Um, I may in the future as I develop my skills, but still, I don't really see the need to do a fine adjustment on the bevel. There's a nice big lever around the right here for, to unlock the bevel, which is nice. A couple of features that I don't plan on using very often but are still nice to have is uh, we got this nice little clamp 
uh, that works on both sides of the blade. And then it has these um, little wings that flip out, and I guess they serve two purposes. They can support, you know, longer pieces. But um, the main thing, the main purpose of these is it gives you a nice, tall support near the blade when you're doing straight cuts. And then when you need to do bevels, um, you can swing it out of the way, so and you don't have to fiddle with screws or bolts to slide them out of the way or anything. They just flip right out of the way. You can make your bevel cut, and then when you're done, you just flip them right back into place. So it's nice and convenient. It's a nice little feature to have. The insert plate in here is adjustable. You can actually make it squeeze in really tight around the blade. Um, I plan on making a zero clearance one sometime in the future, but it's nice that they uh, include the adjustability in this throat plate here. Dust collection, the jury's still out on dust collection. Um, I haven't hooked it up yet, I haven't tried running it. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty dusty just from normal cutting. But it's a chop saw, that's what they do. They just generate a ton of dust. And they're not, most chop saws aren't known for their dust collection. The miter adjustment on this unit is very smooth and it's up off of the base that it's sitting on and so um, it's not scraping on the table that it's sitting on. My other older saw, um, and I don't want this to sound like I'm bagging on my old saw. It, it lasted me a long time and it served me well. But my old saw, one of the things that was very difficult is that the portion of the base that swiveled was actually in contact with the, the table that it was sitting on and so it was it made it actually pretty hard because it was there's all that friction under there fighting against it. But this one's nice and smooth, real easy to operate. One last thing is the, the handle. This handle is a vertical style handle. If you think about it, if you were using a saw, just a regular hand saw, that's the way you would be holding it. And so um, most saws I've used have the handle um, turned the other direction, horizontal. Um, that is actually where my preference lies. I've used this, and I don't know, the way I have to grab it and pull the trigger, um, it hurts my hand. Um, I'm hoping that'll go away. I'm, that's not a deal breaker for me, because again, I'm not holding this constantly. It's just you hold it to make the cut, and then you let it go. So I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Um, but it was of note, I, when I saw it when I, on pictures and everything, I always wondered about the vertical handle and how comfortable it would be. And so now I know for me, not so comfortable, but it's not that big of a deal. This saw, this exact model is owned by John Heiss and it's also owned by John Ju. And um, they're the ones that kind of turned me on to it. I like John Heiss's uh, assessment of it. You know, he says this saw is the best saw for me. It may not be the best saw for you, but you'll have to make that determination by yourself. But I was able to see what he could do with it, and then I did some research and I saw all the features. And that's why I decided to go with this one. But the number one reason why I bought this saw was the number of features for the price. Like I said, I paid about $285 for this, delivered after tax. Um, it, and uh, really, it, the next closest saw to this price point was a rigid. And um, it seemed like the rigid was dealing with quality control issues. And, but still, it was like another $75 more than this saw. And then um, DeWalt had a lower end model that was around $350, $400, and it just went up from there. Um, and so I think for my budget and for my needs, this saw is going to be a great addition, and I look forward to using it in all my future projects. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.